Hello, I'm Matthew Jamir and you're watching Hornbill TV's Prime at 9, now headlines. The Working Committee of the Naga People's Front in a meeting held today at its Kohima office headquarters adopted two resolutions. Ten candidates were shortlisted for the upcoming Manipur election 2022. All the ten candidates are from Manipur and have been shortlisted out of the 40, said the NPF General Secretary Achumbe Mukikon in a press conference. A Boy District Demand Committee has temporarily lifted the ongoing indefinite ban with effect from January 30. ADDC said that the committee and a boy public would see the outcome of the February 2 and 4 meeting. President Ramnath Kovin addressed the joint sitting of both the Houses of Parliament inaugurating the budget session. The President highlighted the achievements of the government, listing some of the important milestones. Prime Minister Narendra Modi said that the government is ready to discuss all issues in the Parliament's budget session. He urged all MPs, political parties to debate with open mind. President Ramnath Kovin on Monday said that since 2016, 60,000 startups have been established in the country, creating over 6 lakh job opportunities. On the first day of the budget session of the parliament, the president addressed the joint sitting and said the startup industry is also an example of the indefinite new, infinite new possibilities that are rapidly taking shape under the leadership of the youth. Since 2016, 60,000 new startups have been established in 56 different sectors in the country and more than 6 lakh jobs have been created by these startups, he said. In 2021, during the COVID-19 pandemic, the president said that more than 40 unicorn startups have emerged in the country, each with a minimum market valuating valuation of rupees 7,400 crore. To get more details on this, we'll be joined by our senior news analyst, L from the newsroom. Hi, L. Thank Hello you so much you. for joining us tonight as well. All right, so El, uh, could you please tell us what is startup and how is it different from businesses in general? Yeah, Atu, uh, I think this particular word has been catching on for the past about five years, especially in India. And it is a movement, I think, that began way back uh, in European countries when financial technology organizations decided to put in money to invest in the companies, the little companies that young people started. So now we, we now know of uh, many startups in the, even in the environment, even in the government, even in the econ economy, uh, and the f uh, even in our economies also. We have a lot of start uh, startups, we have education startups. So basically uh, startups, they are somewhat of a fancy name for a very new business. They are initially a government, uh, a small business organization that is in the initial stages of business operations. They are young, and they normally don't have a me uh, measurable business model or even a measurable revenue model. But basically, they are in the stages of producing a product, and they use a very uh, limited amount of finances. Their funding is limited but their products, of course, based on which they want to uh, attract investors to invest in their business. So what they do is they engage with venture capitalists to fund their products. All right, I'll also, as the president has already said that more than 60,000 startups have been established, does this mean that startups can be highly profitable? Um, yes and no. I mean, there have been... Uh, lot of startups in India especially that have seen quite a lot of profit. Some have seen a lot of profit and some have seen uh, a very high market valuation. Those are two different things. Uh, market valuation is the, your value in the market. It could be high 
it could be very high but you could still be a company that's making a lot of losses so those are different things but yeah of course uh, Generally speaking, uh, we have a lot of uh, startups in India that have been successful. For example, OYO, uh, we know that hospitality services. We have Paytm, for example, the digital payment app, and even Baiju. You call it Baiju, right? Baiju, that e educational app. So these have um, very high uh, market valuation. But then again, on the flip side, there are also a lot of startups in India that are uh, that are functioning with a lot of losses for example you know we have we know delivery you know we have Zomato we have Swiggy we have PTM also so these are very popular companies that we hear and read about all the time but these are actually companies that are making a lot of uh, losses so uh, on one hand you could be a very highly valued market uh, company but on, ad, on the other hand, you could be someone who is making a lot of lo losses. So, yeah, it's not really 50-50, but I think it will be around 20, 20 to 80. Yeah, Atu. Uh, uh, right, Al. Also, could you please tell us what are the main problems facing the Indian startups industry? Yeah, uh, as the president has said that, I think 60,000 startups in a country like India is a huge, huge thing. That's a lot of, uh, that's that's highly saturated and that's a lot of startups to start with. So first thing, I think companies should, uh, uh, even the companies, I think they are feeling that, that a, comp a competition is very saturated, first thing, which also means that it will face a lot of funds crunch because you know, venture capitalists will not fund everything that comes up as a startup. So lack of funds and then lack of, of course, innovation. When you have like 500 or 600 startups all working on the same idea or a project based on, let's say, uh, online teaching and even education, uh, there can be a lot of uh, problems, you know, especially in securing the attention of venture capitalists because you have five or six hundred startups working on education or how to create textbooks online. So that's one of the crunches, that's one of the problems that uh, startups in India normally face. Atu. Right, and also has Nagalin joined the startup revolution and how does it look so far for the state's young entrepreneurs? Mm, I think the startup uh, movement is also catching on with the youths in Nagaland and the government of Nagaland have they have actually listed a number of incubators and tool rooms so that they could nurture startups and young entrepreneurs and innovators who would like to start a company of their own and come up with products and solutions for certain problems so yes uh, Nagaland I think uh, there are a lot of young people coming up with their own ideas and starting startups and the government of Nagaland they have also um, actually instated a poli startup policy that hopefully in the next five years you will have at least five or six hundred st startups in Nagaland. Uh, so far things are a little bit slow to, uh, like, because it's not just about creating a company when you create a company then it has to also to have a first line uh, first line revenue generation opportunities and first line em employment opportunities you have to employ other people you have to have revenue streams only then you can you can be a startup you can be considered successful otherwise you are just a shale and if I'm not mistaken there were some reports in the local media how uh, there were there were a number of persons who have been employed by startups for example uh, way back in uh, 20, 2018 uh, I think about nine persons were employed by startups right. and then in 2019 there were about 10 persons and then in 2020 when the pandemic broke there were about 32 so it's not a big number but slowly and slowly I think people are catching up and people are being, being employed by the startups are too. All right, yeah. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Eh? Thank you, Atu. Moving on to the next news. The Election Commission on Monday extended the ban on the public rallies and road shows during the upcoming state assembly elections due to the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic. The ban will now remain in place till February 11. The Commission also extended the existing ban on cycle bike or other vehicle rallies and processions. However, the EC has relaxed the number of people permitted at the physical public meeting, indoor meeting and door-to-door -door campaign. As per the EC's latest guidelines, 20 people can now be present during the door-to-door -door campaign. Earlier, the limit was 10%. The limit excludes security personnel. 
Commission has now decided to allow physical public meetings of political parties or contesting candidates in designated open spaces with a maximum of 1,000 persons instead of existing 500 persons or 50% of the capacity of the ground or the prescribed limit set by the SDMA, whichever number is lesser from February 1, 2022. For all the faces, the Commission has now also granted relaxation for the political parties to the extent that indoor meetings of a maximum of 500 persons instead of existing 300 persons or 50% of the capacity of the whole or the prescribed limit set by the State Disaster Management Authority is allowed. The EC said that precautions must continue to be observed to avoid spurt in infections. Political parties and contesting candidates shall ensure the compliance of COVID-appropriate behaviour and guidelines and model code of conduct at all occasions during the activities connected with the elections, the EC notification said on Monday. President Ramnath Kovin today held a joint session of the parliament before the ever important budget session commences on February 1st. PM Modi, while addressing reports, also invited all MPs for the session and said that the budget session was very important and that all possible discussion topics would be deliberated and asked MPs to attend with an open mind. Earlier in the day, the finance minister presented the annual economic survey and tabled it in the parliament. Our reporter Jeevan Rai had gone out to meet the public of the state to find out what the people of Nagaland are expecting from the budget this year. Let's have a look at the report. Uh, I hopefully think that the union government makes some changes, especially when it comes to our um, the central guarantee schemes that were uh, brought out because of COVID reliefs. Um, I think they're giving us only about two years of moratorium regarding that. So. I guess everybody in India has been asking for a moratorium of at least 10 years for the funds to be returned back, the loans to be returned back. So that is one thing which we hope to see in the union budget this time around. From the finance minister, I would say tax slabs. Tax slabs is something which I think every one of us, uh, we do get uh, affected because of that. Especially again, uh, import tax slabs. Because of import materials, materials being taxed heavily, what happens is our domestic market, the manufacturing becomes ex more expensive. That in turn, to give it to the consumers, become a bigger issue again for us because of uh, rising prices. And as we've been seeing, inflation has been going up, up and up. Uh, petrol prices, diesel prices is something which we also uh, hope that they'll make some changes regarding that also. GST, I would say... From our perspective, we don't have any issues as of right now, so uh, let's hope uh, some margins get uh, deducted. Hopefully that's one thing that we're looking at. If that happens, our output, input also uh, can see some changes. This financial is something which has to be really pushed. A business cannot work without a credit line. That is one thing. Until unless people of very big stature and finances, they pump in their own businesses. I think the first thing is credit line by the government to all the uh, banks for business people. I think that will be the foremost thing for me. GST public नहीं अभी मोटा मोटी मार्केट का पोजीशन थोड़ा डाउन है फिर भी चलो कुछ में जीएसटी वगैरह टैक्स जो भी है वो कम कर दे तो अच्छा है उसमें सभी का मेनिफिट रहता है इनकम टैक्स तो इनकम के हिसाब से है उसको भी थोड़ा डिस्काउंट कर दिया जाए तो अच्छा है अमेरिका तो छुतो मुतो दुकानिया से ना चलिबो ना परा ओइसे आरो जीएसटी गन तो ईमान आसे इतु गन तो कमती करी दिले बाल लासिले आहा खाली अपने गन यूनियन किबा आसे ना ताते तो गांतु अलग कोता कोई दी भी जीएसटी तो बेशी ऐसे आजकल ये सब सामान दाम दाम हो इसे आरो कि बाएं एक ता सामान आने ले भी जीएसटी बेशी दी बोल लगे इतु ही ऐसे जीएसटी तो ज़्यादा है तो हम लोग रिक्वेस्ट करेंगे गवर्नमेंट से कि जीएसटी को कम किया जाए रबर पे एस्पेशली कम किया करना चाहिए 
डे टू डे में जो चेंजेस आ रहे हैं अगर जी को मोर कॉम्प्लेक्स किया गया है सबके लिए अगर ये बेसिस पे आप देखोगे तो बहुत सारे यूज़र्स एंड सबको प्रॉब्लम हो रहा है इवन कुछ कुछ जो सामान है हम लोगों का जैसे कि इन्वर्टर्स बैटरी जो कि रेगुलर हाउस होल्ड में है उन लोगों का कॉस्ट मैंने जीएसटी थोड़ा हाई है इवन जो अभी आप अपकमिंग टेक्नोलॉजी में देखोगे तो सोलर में जो सबसे ज़्यादा है उसमें भी जी एस हाई हुआ है इन कंपेरेटिव टू प्रीवियस तो आई बिलीव कि सेंटर्स को ये सब री थिंक करना चाहिए एंड फिर से उन लोगों को एक अच्छे डिसीजन के साथ बजट को लाना चाहिए ये तो तेल लगा दाम खान जी एस टी खान सामान लगा दाम खान अलग बेसी हो जाए से ये तो खान अलग नबाई दिले कमती कोरी दिले पब्लिक खान कारण बेसी भल हम आसे इतना मैं भी रिक्वेस्ट कर दिले पब्लिक खान कारण भल हम The Working Committee of the Naga People's Front in a meeting held today at its Kohima office headquarters adopted two resolutions, said the NPF General Secretary Achumbe Mukikon in a press conference. Kikon also said that the House deliberated at length the recommendation submitted to the NPF Central Office by the Ticket Selection Committee in regards to the upcoming Manipur Legislative Assembly election 2022 and 10 candidates were shortlisted to award the NPF ticket for the upcoming Manipur election 2022. All the 10 candidates are from Manipur and have been shortlisted out of the 40 applications for the Manipur election and this will be the third time where the NPF will be taking part in the Manipur election he said the general secretary further stated that the handing out of ticket to the 10 candidates will be held on the 2nd of February at the party office in Kohima yes we have 11 candidates however as i stated we wanted to be focused on our aims and objectives and therefore we don't want to issue tickets just for the sake of issuing and we don't want to to you know, contest just for the sake of contesting but uh, uh we wanted to ensure that whomever are selected uh emerge victorious and therefore we have zero down to ten constituencies the working committee decided to contest only in 10 constituencies in this 10 constituencies in the 41 chandel assembly constituencies is a reserve for shadow tribe we have already shortlisted Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Monday said that the government is ready to discuss all issues in the parliament's budget session as he called for meaningful debates and discussions addressing the media outside the parliament he urged all MPs political parties to debate with open mind to take India forward on path of development budget session commences today i welcome you and all MPs to this session in today's global situation there are a lot of opportunities for India this session instills confidence in the world regarding the country's economic progress vaccination program made in india vaccines he told reporters discussions during the session should be driven by good intentions pm said in this session too discussions issues of discussions and open minded debates can become an important opportunity for global impact I hope that all MPs political parties will have quality discussions with an open mind and help take the country on the path to development swiftly the prime minister said Aaj budget satra ka prarambh ho raha hai main aap sabhi ka aur desh bhar ke sabhi adarniya sansado ka इस बजट सत्र में स्वागत करता हूं। ये बजट सत्र विश्व में सिर्फ भारत की आर्थिक प्रगति भारत में वैक्सीनेशन का अभियान भारत की अपनी खोजी हुई वैक्सीन पूरी दुनिया में एक विश्वास पैदा कर रही है कि सभी आदरणीय सांसद सभी राजनीतिक दल खुले मन से उत्तम चर्चा करके देश को प्रगति के रास्ते पर ले जाने में अवश्य मदद रूप होंगे